This is the first of two Spotlight videos that introduce some of the problems and methodologies that we will explore in this course on enumerative combinatorics. So let's talk about tiling a board with dominoes. So here is a classic phrasing of an enumerative question. How many ways? So how many ways are there to tile a 2 by n board with 1 by 2 dominoes? On our left is a 2 by 7 board. And on the right is one particular tiling of that board using horizontal dominoes, which are orange, and vertical dominoes, which are blue. And so we want to know how many different ways can we do this? Well, where do we begin? We need to try to understand the structure of the problem. And so let's construct all of the tilings for some small boards and see what we learn in the process. So here are all the tilings for boards up to size 3. Now, this doesn't give me much insight into the problem yet, so let's keep going. And in fact, I encourage you to take the lead here. I want you to stop the video and construct all the tilings for the boards of size 4 and 5. Draw them out on a piece of paper, because being able to see all the boards at once will help you to make connections between them. Think about how these larger boards relate to the smaller boards, and see if you can figure out some sort of connection. Okay, so here are all the tilings for n equals 4 and n equals 5, and hopefully you can see some patterns here. If you haven't already thought about this, I want you to stop the video and think for a minute. So here are some patterns that you might have noticed. The first comes from the numbers themselves. 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. This is the Fibonacci sequence. Perhaps that ring a bell for you. And we know that each Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers. For example, 5 is equal to 2 plus 3, and 8 is equal to 3 plus 5. So that tells us that perhaps these tilings are related to the two previous tilings. Even better is if you made a more direct observation that the tilings of size n really are a combination of the tilings of the previous two sizes. So looking at the n equals 5 tilings, I've labeled three of them by f3 and five of them by f4. So what's the criteria that I'm using here? Well, the first three tilings actually start with an f3 tiling, followed by two horizontal dominoes. And the last five tilings start with an f4 tiling, followed by one vertical domino. So we've categorized the tilings according to the last domino that we see. Is it horizontal or vertical? And this leads us to a recursive formula for our domino tilings. f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. And this is precisely the Fibonacci recurrence. Also, I want you to notice that I've added the tiling for size 0, which I've indicated as the empty set, and decided that f of 0 is equal to 1. This is a combinatorics rule of thumb that we will encounter repeatedly. Essentially, our interpretation is that there is one way to do nothing. So there is one way to not tile an empty board. Now our values for f0 and f1 become the two base values that we need in order for our recursion to hold. And so we have our result. The number of domino tilings of a 2 by n board is the nth Fibonacci number. Now we do have more work to do. We actually have to turn this observation into a rigorous proof. But I will skip that proof for now because the only goal of this video is to get a feel for the subject. In summary, we now have a recursive formula for the number of tilings of a 2 by n board. And this is a legitimate answer. But can we do better? In particular, can we find a simple formula for f of n, the number of tilings of a 2 by n board? The answer is yes, and here it is. So how do we get this closed formula? We'll get to that topic in a month. But for now, I want to show you something weird. OK, so check this out. If I take all the Fibonacci numbers and create an infinite polynomial using these values as the coefficients, then I actually get a convergent power series. And the resulting function is here on the right f of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x minus x squared. And while this is bizarre and really unexpected, isn't it? We started off talking about domino tilings, and for some reason, that has connections to calculus applied to this particular rational function. 
Now, of course, this is no accident. This is called a generating function, and the theory of generating functions is an incredible tool for solving counting problems. So consider this a teaser for the second unit of our course, but we have a lot of work to do before we're ready to tackle generating functions. Okay, now it's your turn to come up with a recurrence relation. Here is another tiling problem. I want to know how many ways there are to tile a 2 by n board using 1 by 2 dominoes and 2 by 2 square tiles. Now I want you to follow the same methodology we did for the regular domino tiling, and I want you to come up with a recurrence relation for g n, and be sure to specify the base cases that you need, including that g of 0 is equal to 1, there's one way to do nothing, and I also want you to list the values of g of n for n between 0 and 5. Alright, have fun!